Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, we're back out of Giga Texas. It's Wednesday, the 24th of May. It was raining today, so I had to delay my flight uh, a few hours. And then during the last part of the video, you'll see that it started to rain again. It's been a very unusual May for this part of Texas. Got a lot more rain later in the year and it continues now. There's a few things that I'll talk about in the intro that I want to draw your attention to. First, an interesting uh, uh, display as you can see here. Looks like they are getting ready to or they've already taken a photo for the upcoming Memorials Day with this Model Y decked out with horns and veteran logos on it. So that's pretty cool. Another thing I want to show you uh, is going down to the south end. Uh, as you can tell by these set of images, there's still work being done on that grade, but most of the geopiers and that continuous flight auger uh, set of cranes and drill is just idle right now. Maybe it's a little bit because of the weather and all the rains. But on that southeast corner of stamping machine structure, we can see continued trenching and installation of that white pipe into those trenches in that uh, section. Also, as I've uh, pointed out before, but I'll point out again, more of those rebar cages have been made for the footings that will go onto this area of the site once it's ready to start footing construction. Another thing that I want to talk about as we move up to the north across Tesla Road, as you can see by this set of images, right on that south end of the electrical switch yard where they're continuing to put those uh, beams into those bores in a vertical manner and then sliding concrete panels into those uh, spaces between the beams. They're also doing some of that excavation in that section as well. I want to correct one thing that I said on my previous video. As you can see those concrete uh, sections that they've been manufacturing are not actually pads for the ground but it looks like they're manufacturing them to go in between the spaces of those beams. Pretty interesting. Also as you can see underneath the power lines from this section going underneath over towards the Megapack area the crews have now done that 90 degree turn for the electrical conduit and they're starting to build it towards this section where they had that excavation and those beams and the concrete panels. Also, as we go onto the other side looking at the Megapack site, you can see just how much of the conduit in this section is being prepared. The, um, the concrete vaults are installed. Also, some of the concrete cable tray trenches are being installed on the north section of where these concrete vaults are as well. So quite a bit of work. The last thing I want to talk to you about, or at least point out, is down at that northeast corner of the casting machine structure. Now we've talked a lot about the conduit that's being put in into that section and all the preparation to connect this all the way up to where the Megapack and the electrical switch shard conduit is located. But also, if you can just see with this image, they are continuing to excavate quite a bit of concrete out of the area where these three receiving doors are and also that large receiving door. We also see a truck bringing in some very long rebar. So it suggests that in at least this northeast corner inside casting, they are reconfiguring the ground slab yet again. And I don't know if this is to accommodate more machinery or change of plans, but it is interesting to see this amount of re rework that's going on inside the casting machine structure as well. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope that you enjoy the narration and the views today. Have a great rest of the week. Take care. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas.
I hope you enjoyed that uh, view of this west side of Giga Texas at kind of close range today. As you can see by the clouds, there's rain in the area. Uh, it has been raining all morning. A large thunderstorm came through and fortunately most of the rain kept away uh, during my flight. We'll see a little at the end of the video. But otherwise, activity continues here. A few things I want to show you. The NACOG crews are continuing to work on the wall panels here with some of the plastic on the windows to apply that stain. And as we continue to fly to the south near the main entrance, there's more Model Ys coming out of the end of line, that ramp. On the left-hand side of the screen, two of the Model Ys are being uh, lined up here. They usually line up somewhere around 12 approximately of the Model Ys here, and then they'll drive them over to the east side for that testing and calibration lot. I also noticed this, the uh, very interesting Model Y. Uh, the horns on it suggest that this is the Model Y that was used last year at Cyber Rodeo, showing the jumping of the Model Y, and there was a video of that. But now it's been uh, repurposed. It says, thank you, veterans. I think this is for a photo opportunity uh, we may see some photos from Tesla about that uh, to also uh, help commemorate Memorial Day, which is coming up this weekend. But this is where that vehicle is located near the main entrance. And I don't see much as far as construction on that main entrance at this point in time. So it'll be something I continue to monitor. So let's fly further to the south where there's an interesting development near the temporary platform. If you recall in my previous video, I showed you two very large uh, wooden crates that were delivered on the south end and they were moved up over by this platform. Uh, what you see here, one in kind of a silver wrap, one in a black wrap, this is with those uh, containers, the, the wooden crates removed, and this is what's inside. And I don't really know what this is because there are no markings that I can see. And the wrapping is pretty well uh, around the entire uh, device. There's one section of the black uh, wrapping that's removed. You can see there's like a white item there, but I really don't know what those are. If you happen to know, let me know in the comment sections of the video. So as we continue to fly further to the south, the continuous flight auger drills are still idle. They have some of their equipment. It looks like some extensions uh, available as well, maybe some different drills. But this continues to stay here for right now. Uh, I know that they're making more of the rebar cages for the piers, so I assume that we're going to see more of the drilling at some point, probably on this side, but not right now. Also, the geo piers right in the middle of the screen are idle as well. And that may just be because of all of the rains that we've uh, received. There is a bulldozer kind of preparing an angled section here. Maybe that's the uh, end of the building extension. Uh, so it looks like they're just doing some preparation of grade work here before we'll see more of the piers and the piles being drilled. This truck is bringing what looks to be some of those white truss-like structures. Uh, this may be for some of the production line uh, as they continue to install it in General Assembly. But right now, he looks like he's moving backwards. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's delivered to the wrong place or if it just needs to go a different location. But as we get pan back towards the south, there's a good view of how much rain we just had this morning. It's kind of ponding on the grade. The geo piers as well with all the equipment waiting to be used. So let's fly over the cyber pond and we'll take a look at the road work that is going on with this clearing on the left hand side of the screen as we continue to uh, turn back towards the east. This is what I believe is going to be the uh, extension of River Road, which goes underneath the south bridge behind the drone. And then all along this section, looks like there's a pretty well graded area for that road right in the middle of the screen. More materials being stockpiled on the right hand side uh, underneath those small power lines, more steel parts, and also some more of the solar panels in those uh, pallets waiting to be installed. I'll turn back towards the building on this southeast side, kind of get a glimpse here on some of the grade work of that angled corner of where the extension will be. 
Also here you see more of the rebar cages for the continuous flight auger piles in those rounded uh, long ones and also more of the footing rebar cages, those large square that will be used along the south end to prepare for eventually uh, putting in footings for columns to support the structure. A lot more of the rebar is being stockpiled on the right hand side of the screen and just to the bottom as well. This trenched section on the southeast corner of stamping continues to progress. Uh, more of the white pipe is being installed into the trenches and it looks like a few more smaller trenches on the left right next to the bottom of the wall have been added um, as well since the previous video. As we proceed over towards the east side we can tell that there's a lot of activity, some trucks with some very large items. I'm not exactly sure what they are but you can see the forklift picking them up. They may be some sort of a tubular uh, structure uh, that would be used for construction somewhere along the south end but uh, it's really hard to tell from this particular view but you can see them loading them onto that blue truck. Also that white uh, kind of those uh, parts sitting underneath the power lines those are more pieces and parts that will be used to assemble the AIDA stamping presses and other presses in stamping too. So let's uh, fly up over the power lines. I'm going to turn back to take a look at the activity on this side uh, near where that blue and white crane is located. We see on the ground some uh, large items wrapped in green. Also it looks like a number of Model Y bodies in various states of assembly. I think these are probably going to be recycled and you can see those right next to that uh, green items. So let's uh, pull back and let's uh, take a look at some other parts of the east side of Giga Texas today. This new kind of oval shaped clearing is pretty much done now with the grade work it appears. Don't see any more of the earthwork going on right now. Nearby we see the section where some of the dirt has been temporarily stored, a lot of ponded water on it right now, and then in between the green belt we see this road that's lined with uh, trees that have been planted and also some more ponded water. It's very interesting that this uh, kind of a road cut through the green belt was added. Haven't seen much progress in the last couple of months on that, but it is something I will continue to monitor and maybe we'll be able to figure out what that is for. This new clearing location continues to get more and more materials and trailers parked on it. Also sections with concrete uh, panels being put on the ground on that uh, gravel grade and we can see today crews are erecting a temporary structure on top of where some of those concrete panels are. So it looks like the concrete's making a floor and they're going to be putting this uh, superstructure up, probably be lined with plastic and this will be perhaps a, another workshop of sorts that uh, crews will be using and this may also allow for some relocation of workshops and materials from other parts of the site and then more construction may continue in those areas so something to watch. Here you see some trailers with concrete panels next to them and this sort of like a ramp that's being constructed with wall panels vertically filled with dirt and now more wall panels being put on top. Not exactly sure what this is, but it does not look like it's a permanent structure. Something temporary, maybe for uh, a temporary loading dock of some sort. But uh, if you happen to know, let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate that. As we fly up over the green belt trees, I'll give you a, just a slightly different perspective on that uh, sort of oval clearing on the left hand side and how it appears today. The testing and calibration lot and how busy it is. Uh, right next to the helicopter pad and some of those superchargers as well. 
And the wind tunnel next to this green uh, temporary uh, generator does not look like there's much activity right now. The water detention pond is quite full. That gives you an idea of how much rain we had that day. And the new car staging and transportation lot is very busy with many trucks picking up Model Ys today and moving them off site. So I know that some people have had doubts about how the production is going. Are they able to sustain 5,000 per week? I think the answer is yes and they are constantly picking up the vehicles and moving them off site about as fast as they arrive at the uh, new car staging lot. As we fly up over this temporary parking lot, also where we have a lot of materials being stored, I'll give you a good low altitude view around so you can see what kinds of materials and items are being located in this ever-growing section. I would pull farther to the east to show you an area of the site I don't get a chance to show you very often. As we fly over this kind of rubble hill, we're going to get to the point where they are doing active uh, recycling of many of the crates and containers that bring materials and uh, production items here to Giga Texas. And as I zoom in, this gives you a good idea of how they continue to break up all of this material and get it into this large pile and then they put it onto these large recycling trucks. You can see quite a bit of pallets waiting for the uh, uh, demolition and breaking up and recycling. Also you'll see this large stack of Model Y bodies. This is where they bring some of those bodies like what we saw on the east side of Body and White over for crushing and then recycling as well. So let's proceed back up towards the battery cathode plant and dye shop and we'll take a look at the activity in these structures today. What is evident is the roof is mostly completed with that weatherproof membrane on the die shop. Almost all of the wall panels are installed. The Areas without wall panels are where I believe there's going to be windows and then on that bottom right hand corner doors is the main entrance. And then we see some receiving doors and cargo large doors uh, waiting for their, uh, the doors to be installed. On the bottom of the screen we see more of that blue water pipe uh, being installed now extending completely the length on this west side and then as you can tell crews are putting in that 90 degree bend this will connect it up to the existing pipe where uh, that orange fence is and it's already underground at this particular location as i turn back to look from the north to the south across the die shop this gives you a good view of the status of the building all the wall panels and how this structure looks today because of the lack of cranes in this particular location today i'm going to give you a good close-in look at this chiller plant that serves the cathode uh, plant as well and you can tell that a lot more of that grate like structure has been put onto the roof and some more of it's being installed right now a lot of equipment pumps and manifolds on the bottom the Vapco fan units have been installed and uh, look like they're nearly ready to go um, and this uh, vaporizer system for nitrogen the bottom left you can see some of those manifolds that have been uh, assembled they'll be attached to this and this will be how they extract the vaporized nitrogen from those vaporizers as we continue to fly along the alleyway not only do we see quite a bit of ponded water from the rains but also some of those concrete pads at the base of the dye shop looks like that pour has been done they're doing small sections of those concrete pads on this side of the building i'm not exactly sure why but uh, uh, that's what they're choosing to do right now as we continue to fly around the east side uh, looking to the east and then back to the north this gives you a good idea of the activity on this side of the site also the yellow crane it looks like most of its work is done as far as putting in wall panels and on the ground you can see crews working more on those manhole covers and the vaults with more of that electrical conduit. And I'll show you more of that conduit installed a little bit later in the video. 
But as we wrap around the south end of the cathode plant, looking to the north on this east side, this gives you a good view of the earthwork that has been done, uh, the expansion here for that uh, kind of berm on the right-hand side. And as we drop down, what we'll see is more deliveries at the base of these two tall temporary platforms that are serving the third floor. You can see this accordion truck with uh, some of the silver wrapped items. Also in that large opening, you can uh, take a look inside and that seven story tall platform installed is still visible. They haven't put the concrete wall panels in yet. As we fly further to the north, I'll give you a good view here of the cell test lab. It looks like they are installing some trenches and conduit now near where that sort of horseshoe road is located. And this is going to be the conduit to provide electrical power to let the cell test lab operate. And all this is being connected into those conduits that we saw being installed on the south side. The four temp, uh, stainless steel uh, tanks continue to be stored on this site. And also this large dirt hill is shrinking noticeably now. It's uh, uh, lost about half of its total amount of dirt. And you can tell that more earthwork, more of the center dump trucks are picking up the dirt and transporting it to other sites around Giga, Texas. Now it may be hard to tell, but the rain is picked up right now. So I will uh, kind of expedite some of the flight around this side and hopefully we can get into a point where the rain will slow down. But this west side, much wider, that berm widening uh, continues. Uh, encroaching into where the Martin Marietta batch plant is located. And uh, as we continue to fly around the side of the dye shop and uh, in between the, the dye shop and the Martin Marietta plant, I'll fly over these trees and give you an idea of the current progress of the conduit installation. And you can see some on the left with those uh, concrete vaults, the conduit kind of moving off towards this uh, westerly direction. You can see where the water is being ponded. This is where the underground conduit has been completed. And then more of the concrete vaults here, more of the conduit going underneath this access road. And then you can uh, tell quite a bit of activity here next to this pond, just north of Tesla Road, of all of the conduit, that red kind of uh, mix that's put on top to warn future excavators that there is electrical conduit in that location. All that's coming together pretty quickly. As we proceed up towards the electrical switchyard, uh, some a lot of activity going on at the south end that I want to talk about and show you. Uh, it's uh, really progressing quickly. Um, the piles are these beams that have been installed into the bores. They continue to work on them. They see those wall panels that have been installed in between each of those uh, beams, the excavation work that is continuing. On the left-hand side, you can see those concrete slabs. I thought they were pads, but they're actually making those panels that go in between the beams. And also across uh, underneath the power lines, straight ahead, you can see where the conduit is now being extended up to this particular location. So quite a bit going on in the south end of the switchyard. On this north end, the biggest progress is continuing spreading of the gravel mix along the entire uh, center section of the switchyard. And as I mentioned before, that serves a part of it is to serve as a grounding feature for the switchyard. So that needs to have all that gravel in before we see the switchyard energized. As we fly up over the power lines and the power poles, I'll give you some good views of the Megapack installation site. And there is quite a bit of activity and detail to be seen. As I bring the drone down lower on this corner, there's some concrete items that are actually the cable tray trenches down right at that corner and also a lot more conduit on the right. Those cable tray trenches are being installed directly ahead of the drone right now and that's where a lot of the electrical wiring will be uh, routed around where the mega packs are installed. This mega pack site, there will be two long parallel sections that have all the mega packs inside that cable tray trench is on the bottom left and then here you can see the concrete vaults making this 90 degree turn the concrete the um, conduit is moving off to that section on the south side of the switch yard that we saw and then the other conduit heading to the south will connect to the northeast corner of the building 
Most of the trench work has been filled in here, at least for the largest uh, sections of those two parallel uh, installations for the mega packs themselves. More smaller conduit is being installed. The small trailers are being used here as the workshops, and we can see steel poles for more electrical uh, being stored here, and we'll see that installed most likely on the north side of the mega pack. I'll give you a good view of the north end of the main factory looking right across Tesla Road and how it looks on this rainy morning. And uh, we'll start here on the northwest corner. This is the 4680 battery cell production portion of the factory. A lot of steam coming up or vapors from those vents. That means that production is continuing right now. We see in these kind of dumpsters where it's being compacted and then some up on top of that platform, there is still a lot of construction going on inside this portion of the building. Some more of the reconfiguration work as well. I've seen some concrete that's been cut out and removed from there as well. So interesting to wonder what's going on here. This delivery, I think, is some of those pellets that are used for the plastics manufacturing. And then as we cross the face of the paint shop, and get near where the caster machine structure is. There's a lot of detail here as well I'll go over. First, conduit deliveries being stockpiled here. The excavator is working on this trench. This will not only extend the conduit to the east over where the berm is, but I think it'll also connect in or tee off into where there's conduit underneath this side of the building uh, for the solar panels on the roof. This is a good view of that berm that's been widened. The plastic is kind of getting blown away, but that's to help with erosion. It's more of that conduit as well. And something very interesting uh, of note, you look into those three smaller receiving doors, that large receiving door, there's a lot of concrete that is being ripped up and removed from this entire ground slab. And the truck that is delivering the rebar since you can tell the length of the rebar, that gives you a really good idea of the amount of rework that is being done inside this portion of the casting machine structure. Again, I'm not sure why they're doing all of this rework, but it just suge suggests that a large section of this northeast corner is being reworked. So that's about uh, it for a tour around Giga Texas on this rainy morning here on Wednesday, the 24th of May. I hope you appreciated uh, what we were able to see, what we talked about and the information and uh, find that uh, helpful and puts to context what we uh, see around the site. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of the week.